Hello, welcome to Reso Coder, and also welcome to the sixth installment of this tutorial series in which we are making an awesome air hockey game. So, we've got a big problem. The puck is moving like crazy. It's jumping out of the screen and it's just not behaving the way that we want it to behave. Let's test the game and see for ourselves what it does. So, when I move really fast, and you can see it moved out of the screen immediately, right? Like it's going just completely nuts here. If I try to replicate it once more. Alright, and as you could see, it again got out of the screen, but because we scored the goal, the puck got reset into the center of the screen and everything is back to normal. But we do not want that to happen, because sometimes the puck is not gonna be reset, because no goal happens, and then it's just out of the screen and we there's nothing we can do about it, right? So that's why the goal of this tutorial is to fix this incorrect puck behavior. But first up, let's do a little bit of cleanup. Let's go to the barrier, which is under BG, and let's select it, and we wanna delete this bouncy material from here. What we wanna do is we wanna double click, but slowly double click on this bouncy material and rename it to puck material. And also we wanna bump down this bounciness to a half, so 0.75 should be just right. Now let's go to puck and add this puck material to this rigid body 2D. And now I've played around with this for quite a bit and I have found that the most effective and the most easy way to change this incorrect puck behavior to fix it is to just add a rigid body to barrier. We could also just write our own code for doing physics and for ray casting and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but I think that the most simple way to fix something is also the best way. And that's what we are gonna do in this tutorial and on this channel as a whole. So let's go to barrier again and let's add rigid body 2D. Now this rigid body is gonna be kinematic and its collision detection is gonna be continuous. Now we wanna adjust the maximum speed of the puck. For this we are gonna go to scripts and obviously puck script. Up here we wanna add a public float max speed. And all the way down we wanna add a fixed update method. And inside it we wanna limit the maximum speed of the puck. We can do this by using the rigid body velocity. So rb.velocity equals vector2 clamp magnitude and the vector2 that we want to clamp is rb.velocity and the maximum length is going to be max speed. Alright, cool, now let's go to the Unity editor and let's set the maximum speed for the puck in the puck script and we want it to be somewhere around 20. This should be just right and now let's test the game and see that it works flawlessly. So, if I move however quickly it's just not gonna go out of the screen and I'm just a really poor player of air hockey so excuse me for this but otherwise if I try really even really really hard it's just not gonna go outside of the screen but you just have to test it for yourself because I'm probably yeah you see I'm, I'm going as hard as I can but it's just not going to go outside of the screen which is completely cool and we want it to be just like this. So you could see that I really suck at this game, but also playing this game with a mouse also sucks big time, but uh, we are gonna change that because later in this series we are gonna port this game to be available on Android and we are also gonna release it on Google Play, so stay tuned for that. But even after so many attempts to move it out of the screen, the puck is just not gonna go beyond the barrier or beyond the barrier's collider to be precise. But did you notice something while I was playing the game? The puck always spawns inside this circle which is in the center of the screen. Wouldn't it be more correct if the puck spawned on the side of the player who lost the previous round? I think it's more correct to have it that way. So let's change the spawning of the puck. We are again gonna go to the puck script. We wanna go all the way down to reset puck method. And this method is going to accept a parameter. It's gonna be a boolean parameter with name of dit AI score. The meaning of this parameter is probably pretty self-explanatory. And now we wanna go up. 
and change these calls to this method to contain the appropriate boolean value. So if the puck hit AI goal collider, then the player scored. So this is gonna be false because did AI score? No, the AI did not score. And here obviously the AI did score. So true. Alright, and now again in the reset puck method, after the code that was written in the previous tutorials, we wanna add a if statement, if did AI score, and if it did, we wanna set the rb.position, which is the puck's position, rb is just rigid body, but it's cached inside this rb variable, and it's gonna be equal to new vector2, the x-axis is gonna be centered, but the y-axis is gonna be minus 1. That's because the player is in the lower half of the screen. And if AI scored, that means that we want the puck to be spawning on the player side of the screen. So minus coordinates on the Y axis. And else, so if player scored, then RB.position is gonna be again equal to new vector2, but this time the Y axis is gonna be equal to positive 1. Because this time we want the puck to spawn on the AI side of the screen. Alright, and now let's test if it works, so we are gonna launch it, and in the beginning, the puck is still in the center of the screen, but once we let the AI win, or we somehow miraculously score a goal, so let's try it for a while, but it seems like the AI is way smarter than me, but we can obviously tweak it, we can just lower its speed and hope for the best, but uh, I'm just gonna let it win here, so yeah. <laughs> Once we score into our own net, the puck is spawning on our side of the screen, which is just what we want. And now when we drag the puck, which is far easier than actually scoring it into the AI's goal, so once we drag it and try to put it inside the AI's net, it's gonna spawn on the AI side of the screen for a very brief moment because our AI is really really smart and as soon as the puck spawns, it goes after it and pushes it on our side of the screen. Did you hear that? And you're probably asking, what am I talking about? Well, I certainly didn't, so let's add it into this game. For now, we are gonna create two sounds. The first is gonna be played on puck collision, and the second one is gonna be played on goal. First up, we wanna go to the Unity Asset Store, and now we wanna type in casual game sounds. Alright, and the first asset is the one that we want to download, and it's completely free, and all of the sounds are CC0 licensed, so it's totally awesome. Let's import it into our game, and cool stuff, now we have another folder over here, casual game sounds. Let's go over to scripts folder, and create audio manager script, and obviously let's open it up inside Visual Studio. We wanna add two fields, public audio clip puck collision, then we wanna create one private field of type audio source and it's gonna be called also audio source. Cool, now it's a good time to go over to Unity Editor and go to Scene Manager and we wanna add over here this Audio Manager script and we also wanna add component audio source. And while we are here, let's also set up these fields, so Puck Collision and Goal, which are audio clips. So Puck Collision is gonna be the track 21 and goal can be the track 20. You're gonna hear how they sound in just a bit. Now let's go back to the script, and in the private void start, we wanna cache the audio source component into this private field called audio source. And we are doing this by calling the get component method. Then we wanna create public void play puck collision, and inside here we wanna call audio source dot play one shot, and we wanna play one shot of Puck Collision, which is our audio clip. Then similarly, we wanna create a method play goal, which is also gonna be public void. And we also wanna play one shot, but this time we wanna play one shot of goal. All right, now we have this almost done, and all that's left to do is that we have to go over to Puck Script and create a public field of type Audio Manager, which is our script, and it's gonna be called Audio Manager just like this, and now we wanna go to the Unity Editor and set it up. So let's go to Puck and see the Puck script, and there should be an Audio Manager field over here, and we wanna drag the Scene Manager onto this field. And the Unity Editor is gonna automatically select the Audio Manager, which is the appropriate script for us. Now back to the code. 
So we want to play the goal sound each time that the puck hits the net. So just before this start coroutine call, we want to write audio manager and we want to call a method play goal. And we want to do just the same thing inside this else if clause. And what about the collision sound? Well, we want to play this on each collision. So what a better method to put this into than on collision enter 2D. It's gonna be private void on collision enter 2D, which is a built-in Unity method that Unity calls automatically for us. And inside here we want to just simply write audio manager and we want to call the play puck collision method. And now let's go over to the Unity editor and let's test if everything works and hope for the best. And immediately you can hear the sound and this makes the game just so much more enjoyable and fun to play. And now when I again let the AI win because I am just a really stupid and poor player of this game. And as you can see you hear the goal sound which is totally cool. Or rather not as you can see but as you can hear obviously. Anyway that's it for this tutorial and thank you so much for watching it. In the next part we are gonna set the limit of goals before the game ends and after that we are gonna display a restart canvas which is gonna be totally cool and we are just gonna be working a lot with the UI. We are also gonna add a simple launch button so the game will no longer start after we press on this play button over here in the Unity editor. And if you don't want to miss that new video or a lot of other videos which I will upload each and every week be sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you really want to get notified about each video. Also if you enjoyed this video and if it helped you be sure to give it a like and also share this video with others who will find value in this. Keep writing those comments, I really read them all and I try to respond to as many of them as I can but sometimes that is not possible to do in really short time because you guys are just so cool and you probably want to drown me in the lot of suggestions that you put over in the comment section. Also follow me on social media and see you in the next video.